In this series, we're going to go over all the banned cards in Legacy and explain why they're banned and if they can be unbanned. Today, we're going to go over a lot of tutors, or cards that allow you to search your library for certain cards, a very powerful effect that's appeared on a lot of very strong cards. Starting us off, we have Demonic Tutor, the namesake of the phrase tutoring. This is a sorcery the mana cost a 1 and 1 black in the effect, where you search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. This card was restricted in March of 1994 before Legacy existed, and was grandfathered onto Legacy ban list when the format was created. Why is Demonic Tutor banned? It's hard to put it into words because the effect is just obviously very strong and the cost for it is way too low. When playing a card game, there are lots of times where you think, man, I wish I had drawn this one card. And tutors are basically just every card in your deck with an added mana cost. This makes tutors the best consistency boosters in the entire game. Now, while this effect is very strong, everything in Magic is about mana cost. If you make something cost enough, you can basically make any effect fair. It's worth noting that 2 mana is the cheapest amount for a tutor, outside of tutors with some additional downsides. So, why is a very cheap tutor too good? The issue is that there are tons of cards that can kinda just win you the game in the right circumstances, and being able to find them for just 2 mana is kind of crazy. For example, lots of decks have cards that they just kind of lose to. Tutor can find really powerful hate cards like Rest in Peace or Chalice of the Void to completely shut down what your opponent is doing. However, the situations where the card is best in is in combo decks. There are lots of combos in Magic where if you can manage to cast both cards in the combo, they can win you the game on the spot. A simple example is something like Splinter Twin and Pestermite. By comboing Twin's ability to let you tap a creature to make a creature with Pestermite's ability to untap a creature whenever it enters a battlefield, you can make an infinite number of creatures and win the game on the spot. Now, this specific combo doesn't see playing Legacy, it's just an example that can be used to illustrate a point. The thing is, a tutor is basically four extra copies of both of your combo pieces in your deck. If you have one half of your combo, you can use a tutor to find the other half. Now, the combos in Legacy are usually a bit more complex, and you can substitute some cards for other cards depending on the circumstances, but tutors are still really great at increasing your consistency, especially since they can find you whatever happens to be best in any particular circumstance. All in all, this level of efficiency is just too high for Legacy, so the card has been banned for the format's entire existence. Could Demonic Tutor be unbanned? This is far closer than it has any right to be, but it's still a no. The fact is, paying 2 mana to find any card you want is pretty close to a fair price in Legacy right now, because the format is so fast and has such powerful interaction. Demonic Tutor is the best at what it does, but there are replacements that people have used that are very close. For example, Infernal Tutor can either add another copy of a card in your hand to your hand, or can search your library for any card if your hand is empty. By using Lion's Eye Diamond, decks are able to turn this into Demonic Tutor whenever they want. So, combo decks already have access to this effect, but they have to jump through some hoops for it. Demonic Tutor would be stronger, but it's not like the format's never seen anything like this. The boost in power it provides would be just a little bit too much to too many decks, but it's not quite as crazy as it sounds. How could Demonic Tutor be fixed to be unbanned? There are already a ton of fixed versions of Demonic Tutor, such as the previously mentioned Infernal Tutor. Another way the card could be fixed is by having to put the card on top of your deck instead of directly into your hand, as this would make the card a lot slower and make it a card disadvantage, which would make it slow and costly enough to not be broken. Next up, we have two very similar cards, Vampiric Tutor and Imperial Seal. Vampiric Tutor is an instant with a mana cost of 1 black and the effect where you search your library for a card, shuffle, and then put that card on top of your library. Then you lose 2 life. Imperial Seal is a source of the mana cost of 1 black with the exact same effect. Vampiric Tutor was banned in September of 1999 and Imperial Seal was banned in September of 2005. Why were these cards banned? They're banned for very similar reasons to Demonic Tutor as the raw efficiency of finding any card you want for so little mana is incredibly powerful. Now, these cards do make you lose card advantage, which is a real downside, but to make up for that, they only cost 1 mana. Even better, Vampiric Tutor is an instant, so you can just wait until the end of your opponent's turn to go and find the perfect card to try and win on your own turn. This instant speed makes Vampiric Tutor the only tutor that rivals Demonic Tutor for its title of Best Tutor. On top of all this, there are also some niche applications to hiding the card you're tutoring for on the top of your library. For example, your opponent can't use Thought Seize to rip the card from your hand, and since most of these effects are sorcery speed, you should be more than safe from hand disruption. All in all, these tutors were just too powerful for the format. Could Imperial Seal and Vampiric Tutor be unbanned? Starting with Vampiric Tutor, the answer is still no. As I said earlier, the power level of this card is very close to Demonic Tutor, and the cards are in a very similar spot. They're pretty close to being fine, but they're still just a little bit too good for where the format is right now. On the other hand, Imperial Seal could probably come back and be fine though it would be very strong. It's really important to consider just how much being a sorcery hurts this card. There are tons of use cases that Vampiric Tutor has that you simply don't have with Imperial Seal. 
Even just having to cast it during your main phase instead of at the end of your opponent's turn is a huge downside. Due to all these downsides, Imperial Seal is more likely to be unbanned without really breaking anything, as it would just make certain decks stronger but wouldn't break them. How could these cards be fixed to be unbanned? Funnily enough, Imperial Seal is currently kind of a fixed version of Vampiric Tutor. Another way to fix these cards, besides making it sorcery speed, would just to do something like having it hide the card you find second from the top of your library, or exiling the card face down and put it into your hand at the beginning of your next end step, as well as making you skip your next draw step. These nerfs would hurt the card enough that it could come off the ban list pretty easily. Next up, we have Mystical Tutor. This is an instant with the mana cost of 1 blue. It has the effect where you can search your library for an instant or sorcery card, reveal it, and then shuffle the card and put it on top of your library. This card was banned in June of 2010. Why was Mystical Tutor banned? The simple answer is that it wasn't really that far off from just being a vampiric tutor in a lot of decks. Most combo decks were searching for instants and sorcery cards anyway, so you didn't actually lose very much by playing Mystical Tutor. Most combo decks are using something like Show and Tell and Ad Nauseum to end the game, and beyond those finishers, most of their best cards were instants or sorceries. Beyond finding combo pieces, it could also help find ramp spells like Dark Ritual, draw spells like Brainstorm, and powerful counter spells like Force of Will. To put it simply, Mystical Tutor was able to find too many important cards for too many decks, so it was banned. Could Mystical Tutor be unbanned? This is barely a no, but it's very close to being able to be unbanned. The restrictions on the card barely aren't enough to make the card fine. The thing is, the card is mostly just a Vampiric Tutor. The main downside of the card is actually having to reveal what you search to your opponent, but this usually won't matter, as if you're using it on your own combo turn to win the game, the knowledge they gain won't matter most of the time. Now, it's worth noting that Mystical Tutor probably wouldn't break the game if it were unbanned right now, as combo decks are a bit weak in the metagame right now due to how strong decks like Zet Delver are, which are built to be able to stop combo decks in their tracks. However, the main issue is the card becoming an issue in the future. If the metagame balances out some more, the boost in consistency to combo decks could become a huge issue for the metagame at large. However, this is largely speculative and depends on how the metagame changes in the future, so someone who's fine with needing to reban the cards in the future might want to unban the card. How could Mystical Tutor be fixed to be unbanned? Almost any nerf to the card would be more than enough. Making it a sorcery would make it a slightly better personal tutor, and the card's not broken in Legacy. This would be more than enough to let the card be unbanned. Next up, we have Survival of the Fittest. This is an enchantment with a mana cost of 1 and 1 green. It has the ability where you can pay 1 green and discard a creature card to search your library for a creature card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Survival of the Fittest was banned in December of 2010. Why was Survival of the Fittest banned? This card was simply too good at allowing decks to find the right creatures whenever they wanted them. You could find cards like Fairy Macabre to exile cards from your opponent's graveyard, Quazali Pride Mage to remove key artifacts or enchantments, or powerful lock pieces like Adok Teague to stop certain decks in their tracks. Being able to be used multiple times made the card a lot stronger as well. You see, there were a ton of cards that synergized with Survival to make the card even stronger. Decks like Big Game Hunter had the Madness mechanic, which allowed you to cast them for their Madness cost whenever you discarded them. This made using Survival to discard them a 2 for 1, giving you a ton of card advantage. However, the best card to discard with Survival might be Squee, Goblin Nabob. This is a 1 1 Goblin with the ability where, at the beginning of your upkeep, if Squee is in your graveyard, you may return him to your hand. This lets you discard Squee once a turn to go find any creature you wanted, getting you a ton of value. This level of flexibility and card advantage was simply too much for Legacy, so the card was banned. Could Survival of the Fittest be unbanned? Yes, definitely. The format has gotten a lot faster since 2010, and paying 3 mana to tutor out a creature just isn't good enough anymore. The card might spawn some new decks, or it might see a little bit of play in the more mid-range varieties of elf decks, but it wouldn't break anything. Bringing the card back would be more than fine nowadays. How could Survival of the Fittest be fixed to be unbanned? The card is fine as is, so it doesn't need to be changed at all. Next up, we have Tinker. This is a sorcery with a mana cost of 2 and 1 blue. It has the additional cost where you have to sacrifice an artifact, and the effect where you can search your library for an artifact, put into the battlefield, and then shuffle. This card was banned in September of 1999. Why is Tinker banned? The simple answer is that there are tons of cheap artifacts to sacrifice and tons of great artifacts to tutor for. Early Magic especially has a lot of great artifacts like the Moxen, which paired great with Tinker. On top of that, there are also tons of artifacts that end the game when you play them. For example, Bright Steel Colossus is a giant 11-11 with Trample, Indestructible, and Infect. This is a massive threat that can end the game with just one swing. There are other great artifacts to find, like Bolas's Citadel, which allows you to look at the top card of your library at any time and allows you to cast the top card of your library by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. The amount of card advantage this can give you is crazy, and being able to cheat it out for just 3 mana is a steal. Better than just cheating out crazy threats, Tinker can also find you the best card for any situation. It doesn't just cheat out an artifact, it cheats out any artifact in your deck, allowing you to find the best creatures in the game fast based on the board state, 
or find a powerful lockpiece if you need to try and survive for longer. For example, something like Ensnaring Bridge or Trinisphere. The combination of this level of power and versatility led to the card being banned at Legacy to rein in its power level. Could Tinker be unbanned? No, but it's kind of closer than it has any right to be. You see, most of the best artifacts to play with Tinker are already banned in Legacy. All the Moxen, Black Lotus, and things like Time Vault are already banned. This means that there's actually kind of a deck building cost to playing Tinker, unlike there is in Vintage. The end result is that only decks that would already want to play artifacts would really play Tinker. For example, 8 cast. Now, this would end up being too good for the format, as there are still decks built around artifacts that would love the power and flexibility that Tinker provides. Ultimately, the card is still too good at what it does, but it's not quite the menace a lot of players remember it being anymore. How could Tinker be fixed beyond ban? This is another card that Wizards has already released fixed versions of. Cards like Reshape do a good job fixing Tinker. Another solution is making the card work more like Eldred's Evolution, where it lets you find an artifact with a mana cost of 2 plus the mana value of the card you sacrifice. Let it find literally any artifact is the only issue with this card, as requiring you to sacrifice an artifact limited enough outside of being able to cheat out giant expensive artifacts. Finally, the last card is Goblin Recruiter. This is a 1-1 Goblin with a mana cost of 1-1 one red. It is a ability where, when it enters the battlefield, you search your library for any number of Goblin cards, reveal them, shuffle, then stack them on top of your library in any order. This card was banned in September of 2004. Why is Goblin Recruiter banned? Recruiter allows Goblin decks to stack their deck for easy turn 2 kills. There were a few ways to accomplish this. One version of the combo was with Fu Chain. This is an enchantment with a mana cost of 2 and 1 green that has the ability where you can exile a creature you control to add X mana of any one color, where X is the card's mana value, but you can only use this mana to cast creature spells. To see how this combo works, we need to go over a few other cards as well. Goblin Ringleader is a goblin that costs 3 and 1 red, with the ability where, when it enters the battlefield, you can reveal the top 4 cards of your library, and put all goblin cards you find into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Goblin Warchief is a goblin that costs 1 and 2 red, and has the abilities where your goblin cards cost 1 less to cast, and all your goblins have haste. How the deck work is that you would use Chromox to get an extra mana on turn 1. Then you would play Goblin Recruiter and put 4 ringleaders on top of your deck, followed by a Warchief, and then put 12 other goblins on the top of the deck. On turn 2, you would play another land, giving you 2 mana for Food Chain, as well as draw your first copy of Ringleader. Use Food Chain to make 3 red mana by exiling your Recruiter, and then you play another Goblin card and exile it to Food Chain again. This would give you 4 red mana to cast your Ringleader. You play Ringleader and draw 3 more Ringleaders in the Warchief. Next, you just play Ringleader after Ringleader to draw the last 12 Goblins, ending with 3 red floating mana. You cast 1 Goblin, make an extra red, and then play Warchief. Then you slowly spam out the rest of your hand, ending on a board of several pile drivers with haste as well as a few other goblins that would let you attack for way more than 20 damage on turn 2. However, it also required a pretty specific hand to pull off. The main reason this was so good is because outside of your food chains, you were just a normal goblin deck. Goblins were already a perfectly fine deck in Legacy, and they still see some play to this day. Being a fine goblin deck on top of being able to just kill your opponent out of nowhere was way too much for Legacy all the way back in 2004. Could Goblin Recruiter be unbanned? The answer is no. These food chain lines are a bit too slow and inconsistent for modern day legacy. Now, however, the card is still very good, and cards like Conspicuous Snoop being printed have made it far better, as the combo lines are way, way stronger than they used to be. However, another big issue with the card is time issues. Resolving a recruiter can take a long time, especially since your piles can often decide whether you win or not. Players will often have to spend a lot of time thinking about how they stack their piles, and this can really slow down tournaments. Cards like Doomsday are already slow enough, and it limits you to just grabbing 5 cards. The combination of possibly being too strong and being very slow means that Recruiter needs to stay banned. How could Goblin Recruiter be fixed to be unbanned? Limiting to only letting you stack your deck with one Goblin card would be enough. Bogard Harbringer sees play in modern day Goblin decks, sometimes specifically because of being able to stack your deck with certain Goblins is really good with Conspicuous Snoop and Goblin Ringleader. Giving them a cheaper and better version of it would be overall good for the format, as Goblins would be fine with a power boost. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any cards you think should be unbanned in Legacy? Or have any ideas for future videos similar to this one? If so, please let us know down in the comment below.